Uh, I heard you mention something about your next book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to tell us about your next book? Have you started writing it? I started working on it. I have transcripts of talks on dependent origination, which is what your the... favorite topic, or one of them. Yeah, I, it, I would say it's the richest vein I have mined in all of the Buddhist teachings. Uh, so, yeah, a, a very... The richest vein you have mined. Yeah, because you got to dig into this, uh -huh. very definitely. Uh, all right, tell me more about that. Uh, the, the usual understanding of dependent origination is the 12 links of dependent origination. But that's really only on the surface. That's, the 12 links are examples of the general principle. The general principle is that everything depends on other things. And looking at that in a much broader context than just the 12 links is, yeah, digging more deeply into it and finding the, the treasure that's in this vein. Uh, what I would say at this point, and this is the working title for the book, which of course... They'll, they'll change. <laughs> they'll change. Yeah. It's Soda Pie. Soda Pie. I love that. <laughs> Streams of dependently arising phenomena interacting. S-O-D-A-P-I. Right. Oh, that'll be a hit. <laughs> <laughs> so Everyone's going to want some soda pie. There. Yeah, exactly. It's memorable. And uh, that's the universe. That's what you find out there. When you start looking around, all there are, well, first place, there's no nouns. It's all verbs. I like that. And everything is dependent on other things. And so the verbs are interacting. They're, they're interacting as streams rather than static objects. And this is all you find. It's just these streams of dependently arising phenomena interacting. So as you have spent time mining this rich vein of dependent origination, mm -hmm. and you're also talking about how your life has changed, as you, and you also earlier talked about the benefit you put this time in and the benefit of this, you had more patience, didn't multitask so well. Um, as you mine the vein of dependent origination, do you find, how do you find that affects your life in a moment by moment or day to day basis? Just having that, taking that time really looking at that, you said, oh, everywhere you look, you see this. And how does that change your experience? It's like I don't feel fixate on things anymore or I don't fixate as much as I used to on things and I'm more seeing the processes that are happening rather than the individual events and so I'm getting a bigger picture and a more dynamic picture of what's going on when you see the dynamic nature of things there's less of a tendency to try and grab hold of it I mean, if you came across a beautiful stream, you wouldn't think, oh, I'll just pick this up and take it home with me because, you know, you can't grab hold of a stream. It's always changing. And so looking at the world that way, the tendency to grab hold of entities is reduced because I'm not seeing entities in the same way. I mean, I still see them, but there's this background remembrance that it's, it's verbs and it's not a thing. It's, it's interactions of all these other verbs running together. But so this notion of everything being a verb, and uh, that for me is a Nietzsche uh, impermanence mm -hmm. flow where there isn't anything solid. It's continuously moving, though. But the dependent origination also goes into the interrelatedness of everything mm -hmm. that this causes. How does that specific aspect of it, like... Yes, I see this flowing, I'm not attaching to it, but the fact that that was created because of this set of conditions, mm -hmm. how does that shift? Does that affect your moment-by-moment -moment experience, knowing that related causal conditioning? It's more that it, I'm looking at in the world in terms of the general principle rather than looking at anything specific and saying, oh, this is caused by that. So it's more, it's more uh, a different orientation. Okay. Uh, it also leads to realizing that there's nothing in isolation, that everything is dependent on other things. It's right. not that everything is dependent on everything, which is clearly not the case, but everything is dependent on other things. And then you start 
trying to see what a specific thing is dependent upon, and you wind up with the entire universe, basically. All right, so it, it's a more universal view of the world. It's, well, it's... Hooking into a kind of a web that connects... Right, very um, much. Um, looking at a, at a net, and they talk about Indra's net, mm. and so I am one of the places where some strings are tied together, but all these strings are tied to other strings and so forth, if we want to shift metaphors a bit. Uh, but it also leads to a, a, a different worldview than what we have in Western civilization, which is a very self-centered worldview. What can I get for myself out of this? And now I'm much more seeing the world as what's the overlying big process that's happening here and how is this fitting? This is a really, this is a really important viewpoint to operate from given the interdependent nature of the universe, particularly this little planet, and how we're messing it up right now. <laughs> I, should, are. I should not be going out there and get the good stuff for me right. because that's a mistaken view of what's actually happening. The best thing that I can do is recognize that it's everybody's in this together. If there's a leak at the other end of the boat, it does affect me. And we need to work together to solve these problems rather than grab whatever we can get on our own. This is, uh, shall we say, a rather different viewpoint than is found in some uh, political circles these days. <laughs> Which shall re <laughs> remain nameless. Yes. Um, uh, yes, and so uh, also in terms of future, mm -hmm. um, the notion of what has created this and how this is all connected and there's the interwoven, but also in terms of the notion of planting seeds. Yeah. Well, for a future. It's interesting because, you know, I go to a new country and I'm on the plane, they give me a piece of paper and they put occupation. <laughs> right? So. Can we put John a teacher? No. I, I don't I think I want to put John a teacher. No, I just I put teacher. Okay. And so I see part of my role is to be a teacher in not just of the jhanas, not just of the Buddhist teachings or anything like that, but to, a role of getting people to look at the world in a different way, in a le less self-centered way, a much more interrelated, interconnected way. So that's one of the that's one of the important things that anybody who begins to get this interconnected nature of the universe. One of the important things is to educate other people so that they see it as well. This is the only way we're going to fix the problems that are going on. That was beautiful.